So thank you. Thank you, Matthew, for leading us in those opening prayers. So um, I thought uh, before I give my, my short talk, um, uh, Everyday Bodhicitta, that I, I thought um, something that's helpful to me um, and I could share with all of you is because uh, to experience bodhicitta or that, um, that kind of sense of well-being um, when we're with others, it's a really uh, um, sometimes difficult to access when you have a, a mind like me. So what I'm trying to say is that I have uh, some thoughts that kind of torment me sometimes if I get worried. And so one of the things that I've learned to do, and maybe some of you here would be helpful to you, is do a meditation where I drop into my body. Because um, in my body, uh, I can, um, what I've learned from my teacher, Lama Jimpa, is uh, not to push away the thoughts that I've been trying to get rid of, because they're really difficult. Some of the things that circle round and round and keep me up at night but not to push them away or get rid of them. He's told me this for many years and it's only recently that I really have started to realize uh, a little bit. I'm much, very much a beginner. I just wanna make sure everyone here is aware of that. But that when we drop into our body, we can um, experience a kind of uh, integration of those thoughts that we're trying to push away. Um, maybe like, I shouldn't have done this, I should have done that, they should have done this, they should have done that, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So, and this meditation is very simple because uh, uh, the reason I'm giving you a simple meditation is because that's what I need. Just very simple, just drop, I like it's even the words I use, dropping, dropping into my body where everything's included, nothing gotten rid of. And then there's a little bit of space so that we can uh, have a bigger container to handle more. So um, I'm not gonna say much more than that. It's just gonna be like a six minute meditation where we will, uh, whatever's going on up here and in in here, we're gonna kind of move the energy to here to experience being here in this room right now with everybody here. Does that sound all right to everybody? For six minutes, very short.
So um, can everybody hear me pretty good? It seems pretty good sound system. I have a soft voice, I've been told. So um, so my name's Patty, and um, my teacher's Lama Jimpa, and he's the spiritual director of this center. I'm not sure, is anybody here for the first time, or are y'all? Yeah, oh my goodness. <laughs> Welcome. So, um, so today's talk, the title of it is Everyday Bodhicitta. I actually, a couple of weeks ago, I, I was telling our teacher, there's, I don't have anyone scheduled for giving a talk on July 3rd. <laughs> and so he's like, he went down the list of some really amazing people. And I'm like, but there's not a lot of time. Usually we like to give people a little bit of time to prepare for these things. And I happen to know some of the people on that list would have stepped forward. But uh, he wanted me to give this particular talk on this particular day. And so that's why I'm here before you. And um, maybe you can see from this that our teacher doesn't necessarily have the most eloquent, articulate, <laughs> confident person to give talks. Sometimes he just has a person for a reason that sometimes is unknown to that person give a talk. And that happens to be the case with me. But uh, this particular topic, I've uh, given a couple talks on um, bodhicitta. And um, some of you know what that word means, but some of you may not. But bodhicitta is what we call the heart of awakening. And it's this deep wish to be a benefit to others, no matter what, to, to wake up, we call it waking up, actually, for the benefit of not just people close to us, but all beings, no matter if we're close to them or far from them, or if we, if at least if we feel far from them, that we would be a benefit to that person. And the way we know to be a benefit to them in the best possible way is that if we heal ourselves and if we wake up ourselves, that's how we know uh, that that's the, the, the best way to help. And so um, in, so he, uh, I was with him yesterday. I'm always trying to get clues about how I should present this topic because I, I, I just need help. And so I was listening to him talk to somebody on the telephone and he, this person was, uh, was very excited because they had a, like a vision or a special dream or something like that. They were super excited. And I was like, wow, that's incredible. I, I wanted to know more about that particular person's experience, but then after they talked for a while, I couldn't hear their side of the conversation because it wasn't meant for me. But I heard him say, well, what about service? What are you doing for others? This was after the person had shared something incredible, you know, that I don't know, I can't share. I shouldn't be able to tell you actually. But what about service? What are you doing with this particular day to help others? That's what he said to that person. And that really impacted me because sometimes I think it's going to be some kind of big blowout experience or something that's not right in front of me, which is service, you know, like, um, and service doesn't always look like uh, what we imagine. In my particular case, I work with special needs children as a speech therapy assistant. I kind of, I don't know if you saw that short write up, but I work with kids who some of them are considered emotionally disturbed, they call it, but I just see them as kids. Some of them have autism, same thing. I see them as kids. These labels are just what gets them the services, but they're each as unique as anybody here, of course. And I have 75 of them. And um, so for me, bodhicitta is serving those kids. And I don't always have the bodhicitta attitude. <laughs> There's certain ones that are so difficult. Like they come in like a, oh, uh, they come in with a lot of anger because their lives are so difficult more difficult than I could ever imagine. Home, because it's Title I school. Some of them don't have a home. Some of them are in foster care. Um, some of them, their parents are refugees and they don't speak the language and they rely on their kids to uh, navigate this complex world. So from my teacher, I learned to say very simple things to them that have helped me. Uh, really simple things help all of us, I think. I'll come in kind of like this, kind of teary and kind of depressed. Somebody else say, oh, I'm having a good day. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, you're having a good day seeing me. And I'm like, uh, you know, like Eeyore, 
<laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, I'm like, and but he says it. And that's what he says to me. Oh, now I'm having a good day. So with every kid, no matter what they're like, no matter how they're manifesting, I'm like, wow, you came to school. Now I'm having a good day. So that's my bodhicitta. Uh, I've been, and then, you know, I do notice when I tell them such a thing, they feel better. And so do I. So, um, so I just thought in an everyday way, all of us can be that and are that to people that we love and people that we don't know. Like I, I know people here for a fact are uh, people I'm pretty close to here have helped me feel that way with their bodhicitta. So, um, I, I took, I got these notes here that are kind of extensive and I, I plan to share some of it, but I, I trying to get away from that a little bit because, um, uh, some of you who are new wouldn't realize that I used to, uh, not very long ago, a minute ago, I would only, I wouldn't even look at you. I would just read, look down here, read. <laughs> and then people go, oh my God, that was such a great talk. And I'm like, oh, really? I wouldn't know from, because I never looked at you. <laughs> so I wouldn't be able to know that you experienced this talk in that certain way. So, um, but I think some of what other people have written uh, has helped me. And I thought maybe it would be a benefit uh, to some of you here. So is everybody with me so far? Yeah. Okay. So one of our teachers, uh, teachers is a person, an incredible person who is not with us um, in, in this particular body at this moment in time, but I believe his reincarnation is here with us somewhere in this world. I just don't know enough to tell you, but his name, and he has written many very beautiful books is uh, Chogyam Trungpa Rinpoche. And uh, long, long ago, when I first entered this path, he was one of my favorite people he, because I was too afraid to come here. So I would go to the parking lot, check out the cars and go, can I do it today? Not today. And I would go to borders. That's how long ago. There's no borders anymore. <laughs> and I would read his books and they really helped me a lot. And he says, um, the basic principle of bodhicitta, what we call relative bodhicitta, is how we learn to love each other and ourselves. Isn't that beautiful? And according to him, he says, the basic principle of what we call ultimate bodhicitta is to rest in the fundamental state of consciousness before it is divided into I and other. So that's very profound and I'm not there yet, but I like to say it anyway, maybe somebody here is. So, so um, and, and he uh, talks about something um, that I've, uh, you know, I kind of get discouraged because some of the, this is a really uh, rich tradition where our Vajrayana Center, and we have actually a program on Mondays called the Buddha Dharma program. And in that program, they read these texts that are very um, uh, original texts that are, are quite complex and beyond the scope of my ability. And I get sad because I don't understand, but I like to go anyway. I like to hear what people say, and I like to hear what my teacher says, even though I don't understand something, a little bit of it goes in there, and I think, well, maybe in my next life, you know, <laughs> so, um, but what this uh, particular uh, Rinpoche says that I'm going to share with you is that even though people like me that are kind of simple, our motivation before uh, these very complex things like these ideas, you might, some of you may not know them, but like emptiness or the two truths, these kind of big ideas is motivation. Like, why are we doing all this? And Lama has told me without, actually I call him Rinpoche, he's to me Rinpoche, which means precious Buddha. Lama Jimpa is Rinpoche to me. He says before these other high level practices is motivation in the sense of the, the optimum, like why are we doing all that we're doing? Like, why are we being still for an hour and, uh, and all that entails, why, why are we reading these, these incredible books that are maybe beyond our ability and we don't completely understand? Well, the reason, the best possible motivation is that we're doing this for others. That we wish to be a benefit. So whatever we're doing, like, so that we can be used as a vehicle to express this love that is life through us. And that's why we do whatever we do. And so, um, let's see, uh, it, and this, 
this compassionate attitude of bodhicitta should encompass oneself as well as others. So we see that not only is this in ourselves, we're not, there is this sense of equanimity, that means equality, that what's in us is in everyone. And so, um, and like I have, a, a, I really live here and uh, this is very mm -hmm. painful. <laughs> and people who are around me are like, gosh, it's hard to be around you sometimes. And they're so kind and they stick with me through all my junky stuff. And uh, I found out from Lam, from Rinpoche, I'll call him Lama because that's how people know that that is, uh, we call our jewels, which seems kind of ironic because when he says jewels, he just means the very things we want to get rid of or hide or, or not let people see, you know, our neurosis is what can be a benefit to people because they're like, if Patty can do it, I can do it. <laughs> now that sounds sort of insulting, but also wonderful, <laughs> you know, because it's true. If I can uh, go on this path and and learn and open up more and more than anybody who has that motivation or wish to be a benefit can do it too. So that I found out that those things that are, are my, like I say, my neurotic tendencies that are huge, <laughs> they actually turned out that people who maybe don't have it as strong, but maybe still feel a little worried about their capacity can see in themselves if Patty can do it, I can do it too. So the first thing uh, that, that this bodhicitta has two aspects. So this, other people help me get organized because I have a little ADD and I'm like, how am I going to talk about this? It feels kind of far away sometimes. So I look to others to help me express to all of you. So the first thing is we purify our negativity, but that doesn't mean what I thought at first, I really, really thought, and I practiced hard. I, you'd see me practicing, people are like, God, Patty's practicing a lot, you know? <laughs> At the time, I'm actually practically living here. And it's not because I'm uh, advanced, it's the opposite. It's because I was trying to get rid of stuff, stuff that made me feel uh, uh, separate and made me feel like I can't be a benefit. So the first thing is purifying this negativity. And it doesn't mean getting rid of it, it just means, like I was mentioning earlier, integrating, integrating that all the things that exist in me exist in all people in different ways. So we have to apply this compassion that, you know, like trying to do good out here, but without including ourselves just doesn't work. I'm telling you, I know this for deeply know this because I've been told by good people. I have four kids. So grateful. I have a gazillion friends. So grateful. At first, they would all tell me that. Patty, you're so hard on yourself. And I'd be like, I'd be like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but only recently I started to go, wow, that is a big barrier. How can I really help if I don't start there? How can I benefit if I don't start right here? And um, that means uh, not being good. It means being real and transparent. So when we can start to become transparent and real, then this makes like a kind of like a, it's like fertilizer for bodhicitta because then the bodhicitta just naturally occurs. That we don't have to try so hard because we're not trying to be something. We're just trying to, instead of trying, we're just being. So I've got a big mask and it's a really good one. <laughs> But the thing is, I found out everybody could tell. <laughs> I was like, oh no, they could tell. How embarrassing. I don't think I can go back. So yeah, but here I am. So to soften our hearts takes effort and courage and gentleness and flexibility. And rather than being rigid or defensive or stubborn. So this softening of our heart is essential. So it's not just for spiritual practice. 
it's for all of life. And it's like, if without being real, it's like, it's like a, like a frozen block of ice in the bodhicitta. You said, you know, you know, you practice and practice and like, you know, I just don't feel it. I don't like some people at all. <laughs> and they don't like me either. <laughs> and, and actually that it's, uh, you know, that's actually being real, you know, and like, but it's not them. That's the other part of being real. Like when you look deeply, you start to say, you know, it's not them. You start to realize it's not anybody. It's right all here contained in inside. And that that is kind of a process that sometimes want to skip over and go to the mountaintop with like, I was imagining this person quite like me. It's like, Rupesha, I had this amazing dream, <laughs> you know, instead. What did, what did you do for anybody today, Patty? <laughs> How selfish were you today, Patty? <laughs> kind of those things. So, uh, so these things that uh, we start to realize in ourselves, attachment, aggression, close-mindedness, you know, um, are based on ignorance, feeling a, a separate from the people that are in our world. And then sometimes people come here and we actually uh, understand that our center actually, we are trying to open it up to people who want to be like, I'm, uh, uh, I'm here as a student of Lama Chimpa, but we're trying to open our place up because some people, they, they need a place to come to where they can just relax, just feel peace for even if it's only for an hour. And then when they leave, it maybe kind of follows them out the door into their day and they just come here for that. And that's, that's a good reason to come here. So, but there's, this is kind of going, this bodhicitta is kind of going beyond just relaxing. So uh, uh, sometimes another way that sometimes we come here is because we're working so hard and, um, and I want to just get healthier and I want to uh, start to eat proper meals. And, and that's another reason, uh, a very good reason to come here to kind of say, no, I'm not, I'm not taking care of myself. I'm, I'm smoking and I'm eating cake for dinner and <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So that's, that's not really loving and being compassionate to ourselves. So sometimes I just was kind of wanting to skip over all that and, I, I've told people before, I have had darshans with Lama Jimpa where he took me to lunch. Can you believe it? And the embarrassing part is he didn't eat anything. He watched me eat. Because <laughs> he said, what did you have for lunch? I'm going, well, I think I had a cup of coffee. Oh my goodness, how embarrassing is that? So, so like, I, there's no skipping steps is what I'm trying to say. There's no, no skipping steps. I feel like this place has raised me. I was raised in a family of 10, as some of you know, in a very uh, impoverished circumstances with a mentally ill father. And, uh, and I came here, I needed to just relax. I needed to, I wanted to skip all that. I just thought I could, but um, I didn't wanna show all my junk. And <laughs> Like I say, it's all right out there for everyone to see. <laughs> Nobody that knows me very well would. Sometimes people are afraid to talk to me, not because um, I have a big, strong presence or anything. They're afraid to tell me because they know I won't take it in. And so that's something I'm working on all the time. But, okay, so now those two reasons that we can come here and, and can be our reason the entire time. We have some programs here that are just for that very thing to relax, get more peace, try to just be softer towards ourselves and others. But then sometimes we can have a much larger perspective and that just means we can start to, once we're kind of a little bit friendly with ourselves, we can start to expand that friendliness out into all, you know, people far away, people close, and, and like that. And so that's uh, the bodhicitta. Uh, so uh, we think, you know, you know, when we see people, like in my case, I have 75 students. I, some of them just, I'm like, oh my gosh, how can I help this kid? You know, how can I really help them? I have to, I can't help them because they're here. I feel sorry for myself about this family attend, not having enough sometimes. 
but I always had a home. My mom took me to the library. We didn't have food, but she never told us we were poor. I mean, how lucky is that? I didn't even know it. I didn't know going to Target Barefoot was even wrong. <laughs> I just, I was only later that I looked back and I'm like, oh, that was tough. But honestly, I played outside all day long under a bright blue sky. I climbed trees and talked to animals. And, and uh, I mean, it's just really a beautiful childhood in a certain sense. So now I want to help my students and my friends and people I don't know. You know, when we see things on the news and we think, look, like those shootings that we've all witnessed recently, I'm like, what can I do? So that's the body. like, what can we do? First, make friends with ourselves, learn how to be real, be transparent. We benefit others when we, without blame, can be real and be ourselves. And then um, we keep, just keep, we have to have courage because sometimes looking at that kind of stuff, uh, it feels kind of big and, and overwhelming, the things that we do that we didn't realize. So Dharma practice at the end of the day, we find out if we keep going, if, if that's our wish, if that's our karma, we start to realize it's not meant just to make ourselves feel better. That's not, uh, that's, that's fine, but it's something much bigger than that. We want to help others feel better. And that's uh, really, uh, once you start to really realize, oh, I want you to feel better. I, I, wa I want what, whatever I can do to help you, I want to do. And sometimes we're unskillful and we need help learning how we can do that. Because maybe in my case, like I'm, I interrupt, I'm not such a great listener. And uh, my kids have helped me know I give advice pretty quick. <laughs> and that I found out is not very helpful. <laughs> you know? So... That goal idea of wanting to make ourselves feel good is, is, is nothing wrong with that. But if we keep going, we start to expand it. We want others to feel good. So uh, is everybody with me so far? I'm talking so much. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should pause here a moment. I, I, um, does anybody have a question or comment at this point? Okay. So... Uh, So I'm going to uh, speak to something that's, uh, uh, something that is a little bit beyond where I'm at right now, but I'm going to share it anyway. There comes a point when we start to, um, to kind of start to say, you know, the usual ways to be happy in this world are not, are not, there's not the path. You kind of, rec you start to realize, you know, that's not really what I'm looking for. That, so we start to, like for example, we're not wanting to nurture our, our ego to get better and better and better. We start to kind of, this is the ultimate bodhicitta. We start to kind of uh, calm down enough to kind of question like our experience and question who's having the experience, that sort of thing. And that, um, Along the way, we don't keep we we keep our uh, what's called relative bodhicitta. We we need that the whole time because the sense of a, a a self that we all have and we all need becomes a little bit less solid, becomes a little bit less uh, they call it reified, becomes a little bit more flexible, and then with some of these great incredible people, it becomes completely flexible. They're just manifesting in a way whatever is needed for that particular situation. So to have this kind of um, ultimate truth, we have to have the true motivation, which is this uh, great wish to be a benefit to, to everyone with great compassion and, uh, and understand how other people, we understand our, we have come to the place where we understand ourselves so well that we understand everyone. We understand what keeps them stuck because we know ourselves, we know what keeps us stuck. So, and then, um, so I'm not reading all this because I think, um, I, I don't think that would be a benefit to everybody here, but there's a teacher that I have a book, uh, it's called My Perfect Teacher. His name is Palcho Rinpoche, and uh, he's, he's a, 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 what's called a Dzogchen master. 
And he, he didn't have, I didn't know this. I learned, uh, I'm, I'm, these talks are opportunity for me to learn to be honest. So he didn't have a big monastery, but a lot of people in this room know, know about him because of this book that, that he wrote. And he, he said, um, he, he would gather like in the, when he was alive, so many, so long ago, he would say that the most important thing is this motivation. To, and so he would, uh, before he would even see the people, he would make a sound in the morning with his gong and he would say, uh, uh, people would have to think about this. They would have to think um, upon hearing the sound, they, yes, yes, I must improve my motivation. I must put myself into the service of others. I must get rid of negative emotions and assist all sentient beings without exception. And they would bring that to their mind before he would even see them. And then he did this three times. Then he, they would approach where he was and he made it so this, this opening was super narrow, but not, he wanted them to come in, but the narrow opening would make them have to, they'd have to squeeze through there. And so that was another chance. They'd have to pause and think once again, oh, I must, my motivation is what's most important. I need to uh, check my motivation that before I can see this, my teacher, my motivation is to be a benefit to all beings. And then he did it again a third time, just like I'm telling you now. But then if these didn't work, which the teacher would say, hey, you are just fooling yourself. There's no point in that. So go ahead and go away. You could become a businessman you could become married and have kids like us, you know, <laughs> and then you, and what he meant to say is it's not okay to dress up like, uh, like you can see, I have this Zen here. And sometimes, uh, we, sometimes we might like, and I have a mala here and I have these kind of outer things, but it, if inside our motivation isn't proper, these things lose their meaning. So he's just saying you could, it's more important. It's a hidden thing. You can't see it from somebody's clothes or what or even sitting in this chair, any of that. It's a hidden uh, thing that uh, is this, actually in a way, it's, it's kind of a personal thing. Like, why am I doing all this? Am I doing this so I can be somebody sitting in front of people or, or so I can push away the negative qualities that I have? Or am I doing this because I wish with all my heart to be a benefit in some, in some way? So let's see. And then he, this uh, Rinpoche says, Without pure motivation, no matter how profound the method is that we apply, it still turns into what they call spiritual materialism. To train and be in a bodhisattva and to cultivate bodhicitta so that I can be happy means something is twisted from the very beginning. So sometimes people come here, you know, with we all want to be happy. That's one of the things that, that unites us, but it's not our... Uh, beyond that, that wish to be happy that we recognize that all people have is this wish for everyone to be happy. So Lama uh, teaches on that over and over, and uh, he, he talks about it all the time. So let's see. So, so I just wanted to uh, conclude with, to be a Vajrayana practitioner um, makes we have to have a certain degree of inner strength and it's not aggressive. It just means this. It means I'm not going to give up no matter how hard and I will take whatever comes. And that's the main thing. I'm not going to give up no matter what. And um, it means that when things are difficult, we still show up. And it means whatever kind of harm may present itself, whether it's negative emotion or physical pain, we still show up. And uh, yeah, maybe I, maybe I, I think I, you know, it's this last sentence I wrote here. <laughs> no, I don't think I wanna read it. It's mainly is about our motivation with whatever we do, is is what counts and you don't have to it's i think maybe it's obvious you don't have to be a buddhist to have that kind of motivation that you wish to be a benefit i mean we i've seen i think lama wanted me to kind of talk about uh people in our world that we uh think of 
uh, kind of like as heroes and um, not, they're not necessarily people that are famous or um, or people uh, that are out in the limelight. They, in my case, they could be heroes, could be like uh, students that share their snack with me. <laughs> you know, that's what I wrote in the write up for the roar. I wrote about a student that I, they ha they live in a hotel, and they always they I see them twice a week, and every time they bring their snack. And uh, honestly, it's it's. They get this extra snack from the lunch ladies because people at my school are so kind to share with me. So that's so nice. This is one of my heroes. But the people that are sitting here are my heroes too. And, um, and people that come uh, here to our center on such a beautiful day after that heat wave, this is my heroes too. So um, anyway, so that concludes my talk today on bodhicitta, everyday bodhicitta. And uh, if we don't have any questions or comments, I think Matthew can be doing our closing prayers. Just wait a minute in case anybody has a hero they'd like to share or something like that. Thank you, Patty. I really appreciate the talk. What would you say about when we um, check our motivation and it feels a little bit like imposter syndrome, you know, um, that there's this feeling of like, yeah. you know, like, okay, I'll check my motivation. Not always up front. I appreciate that advice, you know, I, I really do like check that before yeah. you do anything else. But when I do, sometimes it's in retrospect and I have this feeling I'm like, yeah, okay. You know, I want to, you know, achieve enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings. And then I'm like, really? <laughs> Do I really? You know, like, yeah, sure. Like everybody I know, you know, and my dog <laughs> and my cats and stuff. Like, no, but really, I like, yeah, sure, sure for them. All the, yeah. but, but like all sent, wow. Like that's a tall order, you know? It and is. it feels a bit, uh, I'd say sometimes it feels a little insincere and maybe that's just because I need to do a little bit more purification, no, you know, but, no. but I want to, I was hoping that maybe you could speak to that a little bit. I'm so glad you brought that up because I bet everybody here is thinking that very thing, uh, maybe not everybody, but I certainly can understand that what Daniel was asking about, you know, like when they say all sentient beings, that just sounds so, I mean, that sounds so big. So I think, I, I, I think, I don't, I don't think if I, when I'm honest with myself, I hope that's coming across that I am so far from including all sentient beings, you know, like I'm having certain reactions to all every day, of course. But I think uh, what they're trying to say is that we kind of fake it in a way. Um, we kind of recognize, uh, it kind of bring, actually kind of that transparent thing that brings up to me at least, oh, I'm, I'm closed off here to this person or this political group or whatever. I'm, I'm like feeling it in my heart that I'm closed off to that. And then I'm like, that's my chance to kind of look inside and say, you know, look within, because the whole world exists in here. Yes. Oh, my, my students, that's true. Uh, so Morris said, I don't cl feel closed off to any of my students, but I have to t confess to Morris that I do. Yeah. <laughs> I do feel closed off to some, uh, there's some students I'd rather not see ever again, because, because, uh, because of what they've been through, um, they come in, uh, cussing me out. I've been punched in more than once. I have students that are on the edge of going to the county. Um, they're very seriously disturbed. It's not like kids on the spectrum where there's a sense of innocence about them, forever innocence kind of, but kids that have been, um, I mean, unspeakable, really. And so I, I, I get afraid, like, can I handle this? And so, uh, but then I, I fake it. <laughs> it doesn't always work. Sometimes I have to get their aid to come and take them away and I go, oh, sorry that you're not, you can't see me today. It seems like I'm not inside. I'm kind of shaky, but outside I don't look like it. It's I'm an actress, but <laughs> I'm like, oh, I mean, they're bigger than me. They're sixth, seventh grade, but they're big, some of them. And I just say, 
oh, you know, I really wanted to see you today, but I can tell I'm, you don't want to see me and you don't have to, but you, you got to go because, um, because you're in danger to me and to you right now. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I actually, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not enlightened more. So it's hard for me sometimes. It's hard for me. It's true. But I'm, I just have, I have motivation, but it's hard for me. It's hard. Some kids are hard for me, but I don't give up. I might give up a little bit, but then I, I go talk to Lama or I talk to a friend at school. I'm like, and I say, what would you do? Because I don't know what to do. Sometimes I don't know what to do with some of my students. I don't know how to help them sometimes. And so then other people do, they're so amazing. Like I have at my school behaviorists, they're just so amazing. And I also have interns come, they're studying to be speech therapists. I'm just an assistant. I shouldn't say just, I'm an assistant. But I've had a lot, as you can see from my hair, I've been around. And so I do, I know things they don't know, but they know things I don't know. They have these ideas, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Let's try that. And it works or it doesn't work. And we just keep trying. I think that quality of not giving up is what I have. I don't give up. I might give up for the day, like when a kid punched me in here, clock me. <laughs> that kid next day drew me a picture. He's very low. Um, he, I can't say the words because I think we're broadcast, but it's really incredible all the words he knows for somebody so low. He calls me the SL ends with a T word. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but I mean, I look at me. <laughs> if I were one, I wouldn't be getting a lot of clients. <laughs> and so I'm just telling you, I'm in the real world here. And I'm telling you, it's not about me. You know, I get, I can't, I don't always know what to do. That's the beauty of the interconnectedness. Like, I don't know, but maybe you do. Or you don't know. I think I tried this once at work with him like that. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like I'm a mom of four and sometimes I'm in a car with not air conditioning driving down El Camino and they're fighting in the back. I don't know what to do. The person next to me sees me going, you guys, I'm going to pull over and I've got the window down because it's 100 degrees. This is embarrassing. And then later I talked to a friend on the phone and she said, that happened to me, Patty. I lost my voice. I yelled at him so loud. And then I'm like, oh, that's really tough. Let's help each other. And I'll babysit for you. You babysit for me. You know, like this, like we help each other. So some things, um, even today, I thought, you know, people are going to ask me a hard question like that. And I was going to, I told them, I'm going to just say, I don't know good opportunity. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. Oh, okay. Jules has a question online. Okay. Hi, Andrews. Jules. You can unmute yourself. Hi, Patty. Hi, Jules. Say thank, thank you so much for that talk. You had me weeping at a certain point, but um, yeah, thank you for sharing your experience. And um, I was kind of wondering when it comes to motivation, like I noticed sometimes like, you know, I'll try to set like the proper motivation um, for bodhicitta, but I do slip up and, um, you know, find myself feeling very self-centered and doing things for my own um, purposes and motivations. Um, and I'm wondering if you have any advice for how to recalibrate when that, when you realize that and it comes up for you. So I don't, I, everybody here, Jules, I think that's such a great question, Jules. I definitely can relate to that. Definitely. I'm always battling uh, being really concerned with Patty and concerned with others. But I have to say, um, I don't think I'm much different than I was when I showed up here, except for that my recovery time is way quicker. So that's, uh, uh, I don't want to give advice because my kids have told me that's so unhelpful. More, I think, just to say that I'm not any different than you, Jules. And um, I meditating, I mean, I, that's really helped me more than anything. I, just meditating, like I mentioned, that real simple meditation in the beginning. And, and, and really, maybe if anything, like you don't have to be like me, take, be like a turtle. I mean, I still am a turtle. Lama says turtles win the race, whatever race that is. But it's like where you feel like, oh, I don't want to be that kind of person. 
like the so so concerned with what I'm doing and what others are not doing and all that, but yet there it is. And so um, I I think meditating in that way of like you know you do have that quality, or I shouldn't say you. I'll say I have that quality of being very looking out for me, and that is real. That's true. And then I, I first of all acknowledging it, it can uh, can say, and then next that person's just like me. They have the same wishes I do. And so when we get still like that, it's possible in a way that you can't even believe, oh, I feel a little lighter. I feel like I can, I can, I can expand. And that's what, so like I'm in my head mostly, but lately I find myself in my body a little bit more. And that's, uh, that's why that simple meditation of going from here to hear, just even really thinking that this, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to go into my heart and I'm not getting rid of this at all. I'm just going to go here because my heart can handle my head. Does that help Jules at all? Does that? It does, Patty. Thank you. I just take whatever. And there's somebody here too. After you, then uh, another friend there. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Patty, for your talk. I always enjoy your talks very much. Um, one of the things I enjoy most about your talks is I always understand them completely, like every word. Aww. And that's not always the case <laughs> because I don't study enough. So <laughs> Lama will go on and on about something that's just whew, way over my head. Um, but I understand you every time. And um, it's funny what you said about if Patty can do it, you know, <laughs> or is that what you said? Something that like is that. it. So, yeah. yeah and, and so I came here because I wanted to hear you talk specifically and support, oh, thank support you. you. Thank you. Um, so I, I told my partner as I was leaving, I'm off to give Patty some love. No. <laughs> um, but when you do talk, I always admire, I think, how brave you are because I I can't see myself. Even this, taking the microphone is a big, huge deal for me. You don't often see me take the microphone. But I thought you I you deserve for me to say some kind words. Oh. <laughs> um, but I was I, I watch you and I think, well, Patty's so brave. And and then sometimes I think, well, Patty can do it. Maybe I can take the microphone. You know? Definitely. <laughs> so I did have that thought. If Patty can do it, I can do it. But I'm not saying to put me in that chair ever. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to thank you for your talk. Um, very relatable, very un understandable. And I really appreciate your honesty very much. Thank you. So uh, this friend here would like to. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. I think now it feels like it's not on. It is okay. Um, I actually have a a question, even though you said you don't want to give advice. But I, your talk has been wonderful today for me. It it mm. it just. I mean, I've had the anxiety about so many things, and even started taking antidepressants, which I managed to get off. But okay, I, I live next door to we live really, you know, the houses are real close together. We're friends with these people. And when the Ukrainian thing started, she's a craftsperson, she sews and so do I, I made this, I wrapped our big tree with blue and yellow material for the Ukrainians. Mm -hmm. And then I said to her, I, I bought too much material. Would you like some for your trip? And she said, oh, I haven't decided which side I'm on. And mm. OK, these people I've lived next door to for 19 years. And we had this. They still give us their vegetable scraps that I put in my compost. And the deal is that I give them flowers, mm. which is very enjoyable thing to do in both sides. I have good compost, and I right now have a lot of flowers. 
And I look at the flowers and I think I should be giving them some flowers and I can't bring myself to do it. I am so angry. And I, I lie awake at night about this oh. actually um, because I have this anger. And I was wondering, should I make myself give the flowers even though I, <laughs> I, I feel like giving that with the, say, I'll give you these flowers if you would please watch something besides Fox News, Fox uh, News. Yeah. just once, mm -hmm. just any news, anything that's not Fox News, just if I give the flowers and say that, <laughs> is that, am I being a good person? Am I benefit? You know, anyway, there's my question. Oh, <laughs> you know, that I really like this, the question like that, because um, the reason I like that question is because, uh, well, in my own family, uh, I have people who are very different than me that probably think like your neighbor. And, um, and so there's certain conversations we just don't have because there's just no, there's no bridging that for me and for them towards me. They think I'm, they just, I'm inexplicable to them. And I guess this is the same in return. So I don't, I'm, in this way, I don't think we necessarily have to hang out with people that, you know, whose view is so vastly different from our own, but just, it's more like a recognition that that anger, it is our own, it become, it's our own anger. It doesn't mean that we would agree with them. We don't lose that discernment, I don't think, you know, like, wow, that's not right. <laughs> you know, you know, that's not very kind, whatever, but we still, we just recognize that that anger uh, keeps us from living the full life that we're meant to live, you know. But at the same time, like I mentioned, not getting rid of it, that's, that's the thing. But, you know, I, I think that's such an invaluable thing that you're saying, because I'm like thinking myself, like, how do, for my own life, like what you're saying, like, how do I, <laughs> so that, uh, body, you know, may I wake up for the benefit of all beings, uh, you know, I, I'm glad people ask questions like you and, and uh, Daniel, because that's real, like, and, and uh, I, th I think that's why they call it a practice rather than an outcome in a certain way. However, I have met people that they would still say, uh, you know, that they would like that His Holiness is, in fact, his birthday's coming up on Wednesday, by the way, <laughs> but he, he, would, he would say, he calls the Chinese his elder brother, you know, and he's lost his country they're his elder brother but he doesn't think that they should do have done that to remove them from their country but yet they're his elder brother so this is just really remarkable but he doesn't agree with what they've done simultaneous does that make sense like we can disagree without being full of hatred we can say i don't agree with them might not even want to hang with them but we don't have to um but you know i think just being still with ourselves and um just kind of feeling you know, sometimes we have these different practices where we imagine people that are difficult for us in front of us, and we imagine sending them love like that. That doesn't mean we're, we're not out to necessarily, sometimes that, amazingly, they, they start to change in our view, we start to see them in a different way. That doesn't mean we agree with their polit politics, so, you know, I don't know, if, I don't think I can give such a simple answer to such a thing. Although I think people here, everybody here, I would imagine would be like, oh yeah, yeah, what about that? <laughs> you, know, you know, like that. I, I definitely feel that way. And I'm glad you brought it up because otherwise people leave here going, what, all beings? <laughs> you, know, you know, that's, yeah. yeah, that's really helpful. Thank you so much. Okay, so I think that's it, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> now we'll do dedication. Thank you, Patty. Your talk was very, very warm, honest, and transparent, and takes a lot of bravery. Thank you. Through the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. 
In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good, all powerful Chinrezik, Tenzing Gyatso. Please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Lo Song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators, please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion, Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom, Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras, Tsongkhapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages, the Sangagpa, I make request at your holy feet. Mm -hmm. Could you could you do the announcements, Susan, the different things? Not sure if I'm announcing everything, but I'll do, and then you can add in whatever I miss. Um, so a lot of what Patty was talking about today, so eloquently. Um, was the development of compassion. And um, I just wanted to remind people in case you have not seen it on the emails or in case you're just kind of thinking about it. Um, we have a, a two-day workshop the end of July called Cultivating Compassion um, with a nun who is very near and dear to my heart and to Lama Jinta's heart and to many people here. Um, Venerable Tenzin Choki will be coming up and doing a two-day workshop, giving us a lot of insight and a lot of skills to do just exactly what it is that Patty has been describing today. So if you um, are, don't have anything to do at the end of July, it will be a really, really valuable two-day workshop. Um, if you haven't received the email and you'd like to know a little bit more about it, um, see me. And I can forward the email to you and talk to you a little bit about it if you want to know. Um, the other thing is, is Wednesday night, as Patty mentioned, uh, July 6th is the birthday of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And we used to do this pre-COVID very frequently, but uh, we haven't done this in many years. And it's a practice called Lama Chopa. Um, Lama Chopa, and I think I'm right about this. I'm not sure. I wish... Um, Dirk was here, but JD, you may know, um, or Patty, you might know. Anyway, somebody. Um, this practice was written by a student for his teacher as a praise and, um, yeah, you probably, uh, praise and, and, and um, appreciation for all that his teacher has taught him. And his teacher received this teaching and gave it back to his student um, as, as reciprocal because he had learned so much from his student. So Lama Chopa is a relatively long practice. It's very fun. It's very eloquent. And it is in praise and appreciation of all of our teachers from Shakyamuni Buddha all the way through Patty. You know, um, it is, is a, a wonderful celebration. And part of the practice is um, something called a sog, T-S-O-G. It is a feast, a ceremonial feast. We bring little things like nuts and wrap candies and dried fruit, nothing, no big deal. Um, and the food is blessed. Um, Geshe Damcho will be um, our teacher for this. And the food is blessed, and then we all kind of eat a little bit of food, and then we save a little bit. We take it out to the hungry ghosts so we could feed them too. And then we finish the practice. And it's just beautiful. I mean, it's really, really nice. So we haven't done it in a really long time, and we're going to do it this Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock. So thank you to the Wednesday meditation group for giving us the, the space to do that. Um, and... Those are, I don't, do you want me to do, talk about the other meditation? Tuesday evening, Lama Jimpa holds a meditation in the uh, dojo, which is the back room, not in this room, but in the, the back room, the community room. 
um, for what, 6.30 to 7 to 8.30, right, right. So it is um, he and um, his wife, Sabrina, hold this meditation class. There's some walking, there's some sitting, there's some teaching, and it's um, quite wonderful. So um, Patty has one on Thursday nights on Bodhicitta. Morris, who's over there fiddling with his phone, um, has one on Saturday morning. So we have lots of opportunities for people to come and meditate. It's open every morning, right, at 9? Oops, never mind. <laughs> it used to be. Maybe it will be again. Not bad. Okay. 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 All right. So that's all I can think of anymore. Okay. All right. So, so next, oh, next Sunday, Lama Jimpa will be here um, giving a talk on July 10th. So that's it. <laughs> so I hope this weather, I hope they're not full on us. I hope it stays cool. I'm from Minnesota. This is unacceptable. <laughs> you know?